BBC. I have a few questions to ask you, which I have at hand here. I will be picking from here. And if you can answer these questions, this should be that you have record or evidence. BBC, did anybody give you the evidence of a picture or video clip of a rape or oppression or attack or being maltreated among all the people you interviewed? No. A few days ago, BBC released a three-part documentary exposing Prophet TB Joshua on allegations of rape and torture, a lot of things, occultism and a lot of other things. Now, according to the BBC, though, this is what they wrote at the end of the documentary. The BBC contacted the church leadership with the allegations in this film. They replied that making unfounded allegations against Prophet T.B. Joshua is not a new occurrence. None of the allegations was ever substantiated. This was the reply that the church member leadership gave to the BBC. Now, they said that they did not respond to the details of the allegations. Now, this is not the first time that Prophet T.B. Joshua has been accused of something or has been exposed or something like that. As far back as 2001, there were articles about Prophet T.B. Joshua and even in 2008, Bisola, one of the women who spoke in, um, in the documentary, she tried to expose Prophet T.B. Joshua. When I posted the video of the expose, a lot of people in the comment section were asking that, why did they wait for him to die? Then after three years, now that they are bringing out this video. Well, this is not the first time that Prophet T.B. Joshua has been accused of something like this. It's not the second time, not the third time. Now, the church did not respond. But then his sons, some of the people that he trained, they have come out with response to BBC, asking BBC certain questions and throwing certain facts and figures at BBC. I have the full yes for you. I'm the headless YouTuber, the headless reactions. All I say, Yanko! Now, the first person to respond was Prophet I.O. Samuel. Now, this man, if you look at his hairstyle and his beard and you look at Prophet T.B. Joshua, you know that, yes, like father, like son. Like, <laughs> uh, you know that, like father, like son. Now, this man, Prophet I.O. Samuel, is the head pastor of Shiloh World Chapel in Nigeria. And he has made a video asking BBC certain questions. BBC, did anybody give you the evidence of a picture or video clip of a rape or oppression or attack or being maltreated among all the people you interviewed? No. Is any one of them still in synagogue today? No. Did they leave synagogue more than 10, 15 years ago? Yes. We are the people that always stay with man of God and the ones that stayed with him till the end of his life on earth, unto glory, they enjoyed life. I want to ask you, BBC, if these people were maltreated, for example, Chloe, that's the last baby in the family of Prophet Chris, the family of Tongue, husband and wife that live with the entire family in synagogue. They just left after the time God took man of God unto glory. They were still there. The sister, the elder sister, married the second man to Prophet T.B. Joshua. The second man called Rasin. All of them went to London. They have ministries. If they were oppressed, why would the family be giving the charity funds to be going around the world to do charity and report back to synagogue until daddy went on to glory this family lived in synagogue if they were being oppressed remember these are british people that you can interview you never interviewed the, the parents and the last baby was claiming that she was being oppressed go and do researches this lady was one of the ministers that disciple and began to preach they were being treated as royal family from Britain. Chris, if the brother Chris became a prophet and Prophet T.B. Joshua is a fake man of God or evil, how did Chris become a known prophet in London till today in UK? Verify. I want you to also verify who is Bisola? What is her mission? Why this clip 
at the glory time that man of God is resting, why this clip after three years? Why did no one report to authorities of Nigeria or international security people like DSS or FBI or uh, uh, EFCC or police? There was no record like that. PBC, go to your archive. We are you not the one that interviewed Prophet T.B. Joshua and made the whole world to know about him? It's on the news. We have the record. Why today? People are now telling you the wrong things. Guide your steps. Trace your steps. Search for the truth. I am not here to defend Prophet T.B. Joshua as a perfect man. I am here to talk about the man of grace. He was towards perfection, before, but he's not perfect. All the men of God in Nigeria and Africa and the world today, if they can walk like him in charity, in love, in humility, in prayer life, isolation life, in prayers, silence, without responding to all these people for once, devil will check out of this world for us. Another person who has reacted to the BBC expose of Prophet T.B. Joshua is wise man Harry. Now this man is also, you know, a son of Prophet T.B. Joshua. He is the head of the Squan um, Thessalonica in Greece. That's the a synagogue church of all nations in Thessalonica, Greece. That's where he heads. And he too has made a video. And in his video, he is also asking questions. He is wondering, say, so one of the ladies, they know her as Rachel Holmes. But in the video, she, she is going by a different name. Saying that she, she was lesbian. I'm not here to accuse anybody or to condemn any, anybody. The judgment belongs to the Lord Almighty. On the last day, everybody will give his account. Just to take little out of what I saw in the BBC documentary, the first person who spoke was Rachel Holmes, which her name now is Rai. I don't know if maybe she changed her name. We knew her as Rachel those days. And the first thing she started saying, she said, I'm a gay, I'm a lesbian. I stand for this. I have always been, I never change. I thought if I go to Scone, I will change but I never change. That was the first thing she started by saying. And some other people who spoke. Everybody came with their own problems. Some was this, some was that. We don't want to begin to mention the past of, ev of every person because everybody has a past before we come to know the truth of Jesus Christ and receive our salvation. But you can understand, people who failed to make it in life, people who failed to succeed as true disciples, as true genuine Christians, are the ones who eventually got frustrated, gang up together, and come out with this false stories trying to tell the world why they themselves failed in life. He was also asking that if all these people were indeed being tortured and raped and all that as they claimed that they were, why did they stay there for 10 years, 15 years and all that? Now if somebody is doing something as bad as this to you, why won't you just walk away or go away? Why are you there for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years? But my question also is, if all these bad things were happening to them, how come one of them stay there for 14 years? Another one stay there for 17 years? Another one stay there for 20 years? Another one stay there for 15 years? How come a person who is well with his senses will not want to stay in a place where they rape him. Who wants to stay where they rape you? You want to go, you want to run away, you want to escape. So this is a pure lie. He also threw a question at one of the men, a prophet Agomo, 
when he was this man here, yeah, he was very close to Prophet C.B. Joshua. If you watch Emmanuel TV, you will see him on the show every single day. Now they were asking, say, if this man is claiming that Prophet C.B. Joshua was fake, does that mean the miracles that he, the man, Mr. E, Prophet Agomono, the things he was doing when he was with C.B. Joshua, all the miracles, no? Does that mean they are also fake? Does that mean all this while that Prophet C.B. Joshua was going around from country to country, going for crusade and healing millions of people, no? Was that also fake? Or another one who said the miracles were fake. If the miracles were fake, what were you doing in that ministry for the past 20 years? What were you doing when you became yourself a junior prophet? I'm talking about Agomo. He became a junior prophet and he experienced himself the power of God. He stretched forth his hand and many people got healed, got delivered, got blessed. God used him. The power of God passed through him to heal, to save, to bless. Was those miracles also fake? The time God use, were using him, was those miracles were also fake? And if he says it was fake, was all the miracles Prophet Ibi Joshua went for crusades all over the world in the presence of hundreds of thousands of people and millions watching live, were those miracles also fake? You can deceive one man, you can deceive two people, you can deceive three people with tricks, but you cannot deceive millions. You cannot deceive a whole stadium. The testimonies of those who were healed, blessed, delivered, those whose lives were changed are millions all over the world. And they still stand. He also said that when BBC released the documentary Fresh, if you go to the comment section, you see a lot of people trying to debunk the allegations, saying that, oh no, Prophet C.B. Joshua is good. I really received healing. I have already received healing and all that. But now, if you go there, the BBC has deleted all those good comments about Prophet C.B. Joshua, and you will see only bad comments. These are his words. Another thing that was very strange to me was that when the BBC documentary came out, I read the comments, all the comments down, they were positive, speaking good things. People were coming out to write testimonies that no, I don't believe this documentary, this is not true. I personally receive a healing from Prophet B. Joshua. I personally receive a blessing, I receive deliverance. I receive a prophecy, my life changed since I went to Skoan. Many people wrote testimonies. And I told to one of you, I said to one of you, don't be surprised if within a few days you will see all the positive messages start disappearing from the BBC comment section and you will start seeing only negative comments. And the person said, no, it is not possible. It, it will show, it will prove that they are doing something, you know, because we all, all of us, we, we read the positive comments. I dare you, go and read the comment sections on the BBC Africa documentary now. You will see a lot of negative comments. Maybe one positive, the one that they forgot. Most of them they remove already and they ban those accounts. They ban them not to send more positive comments which really exposes the hidden agenda of BBC Africa. There are a lot to be said about these questions that they are throwing at the BBC. If you watch the documentary part one, part two, part three, you will see that they showed a part where the people were trying to escape Prophet C.B. Joshua, saying that he was um, trying to kill them. The families were lied to. He bought the whole system. How do you stand up to a man who has got a list of presidents in his pocket? Just continue to watch Emmanuel TV. TV Joshua preaches forgiveness, he doesn't forgive. They shot at the back of the vehicle. Bah, 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 bah. He sent them to kill me. Please to kill me. Everywhere I turn to, 
was like, whoa. This man had pastors, had police generals and all that coming to his church. So you that you are being abused over there allegedly, no? who are you going to report to? Now these are some of the things that were in the documentary. I'll suggest you watch the documentary part 1, 2 and 3. After that you will get all your answers. But then these are the questions that uh, the sons of Prophet T.B. Joshua are throwing at BBC. If you have the answers, let me know in the comment section whether the BBC will reply or not. We are here for the violence. Watch other videos on this channel. Tell somebody about Headless. Daddy! Yeah,